Seven years ago, I was in an accident, and I suffered a serious head injury. I recovered, but for some time, my speech was slow and labored. I often struggled to find the words I needed to say. My story is not unique uh, in that all of us, no matter what race, gender, or nationality, have struggled with challenges and adversity to be here. I want to thank the wonderful classmates from the Friday and Saturday class of 2018 for the opportunity to address you today. Seven years ago, I would never have believed this moment would be possible. I have a story about adversity, camaraderie, and responsibility to tell you. It begins August 26, 2016. It was a sweltering Friday in New York City. The sun rose that morning at 6.17 a.m. and it set that night at 7.37 p.m. The temperature lingered just below 100 all day. Bitcoin was selling for $578. <laughs> August 26, 2016 was the day we met for the very first time. In, a room, th in room 301 in the building behind me, nervously, we gathered at 9 a.m. to begin a journey that forever changed our lives. For you, our friends and families, August 25th, 2016 marks the last day you saw us for any substantial length of time. And going forward, you will see more of us, we promise, indeed, Thanks to the copious, copious amounts of food Columbia has fed us the past two years, there is actually more of us to see than there was on August 26, 2016. That first day, we were introduced to each other by Dean Carlson. We created our contracts in our learning teams, pledging to each other to be respectful, to be courteous, and to be on time. We promised to do all of our homework and to turn it in early. God loves a trier. <laughs> Professor Paul Ingram walked us through our first case. Tentatively, tentatively, we raised our hands and offered our first answers. We soon discovered the importance of those learning teams. The professors give you so much work in business school, you can't possibly do it alone. You have to work together, which is maybe the most important lesson we learned. As management expert Ken Blanchard said, none of us is as smart as all of us, which is particularly true if you've never had accounting. <laughs> Our first accounting assignment was supposed to take two hours. And by the way, never believe a professor when they say an assignment will take you two hours. It is always some multiple of two hours. We spent 18 hours trying to figure out non-controlling interest where to put it on the balance sheet, and how to account for a joint venture. We suffered through back-to-back three-hour lectures and take-home midterm exams that ticked like a bomb, turn, counting down the minutes until you had to turn in your spreadsheet with every conceivable answer you could pull out of thin air in a desperate attempt for a high pass. Every so often, someone would point out the fact that we voluntarily signed up for this. <laughs> and we were paying a lot of money to be here. And then there were the finals. Do you remember that moment we walked into Watson Library in the business school building to study? We looked at each other and we thought, so we found the club, but does anybody know where the library is? <laughs> the social networking in Watson Library is so loud, it is truly futile to try to study there. You only go there to party between classes. Since we partied in the library, we had to study everywhere but there for finals. We studied on planes, on trains, in our offices during lunch breaks, and of course, every hour of every weekend. Everyone had their own personal strategy for taking finals. Some of us sat in the same seat, in the same room, for every test, never straying from a routine in the hopes of a miracle. Some of us carb-loaded. Some of us waited until the night before to learn all of the material, aced the exam, and ruined the curve for the rest of us. <laughs> it wasn't all work. We traveled the world together. As a matter of fact, if we were doing anything, we were doing it together. 
If we were running marathons, if we were starting companies, if we were eating, studying, hiking, working, drinking, napping, we were doing it together. Mostly, we created opportunities for each other to succeed. Comedian Amy Poehler said, find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life. My standing here is an example of what my classmates have done for me. Today, May 12th, 2018, is our final lecture. The sun rose at 5.42 a.m., and it will set at 8.03 p.m. tonight. And just like August 26, 2016, something new begins today. The topic of our final lecture centers on how do we take the responsibility born of this great opportunity to change the world. Columbia has given us more than a degree. It has provided us the potential to be leaders with a concurrent responsibility to be of service. This is our greatest assignment. Together, we all move forward from this lawn forever better, forever changed, and all of us possessed of an opportunity that Hemingway captured so beautifully in saying, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Our time at Columbia has made this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2018 has already accepted the challenge and responsibility to change the world. 6% of the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are women. 20% of the members of the United States Congress are women. Yet 100% of today's student speakers are women. Beginning today with our families who have loved us, created us, and supported us, together we share the responsibility and the power to improve our lives and the lives of those around us, to speak for those who are silent, and to take immutable, broken circumstances and fix them. There will always be challenges. Nothing is easy, and nothing is given. But how can we be anything other than exuberantly hopeful But how can we be anything other than exuberantly hopeful given the extraordinary people gathered here today? Let me be very clear. These are the people who will make all of our tomorrows brighter. Thank you to the professors in the administration of Columbia Business School. Thank you to our friends and families. And finally, congratulations and thank you to the wonderful men and women of Columbia Business School, class of 2018.